Let's talk to our buddy Ben Standing of The Athletic. Covers the Commanders. Always very plugged in on all of their proceedings. Benjamin, how are you? I am uh, I'm well, fellas. Thanks for your patience, and uh, thanks for having me on. No worries at all. Of course, buddy. Uh, why don't we just dive right into it? Brandon McManus was cut by the team yesterday. I was very surprised because they came out and issued a statement saying they had to do pretty much a thorough investigation in the, in the allegation. Did they do that, and that led to them cutting them? Or did they just decide, this is not worth our time, he's just a kicker? Yeah, well, we're gonna, we'll talk to Dan Quinn on Wednesday and get insight into, you know, to whatever degree he'll share what what they did. Um, you know, look, I don't know how much they could have done in in a week, obviously, to have a, a, a strong, strong feel. I mean, I, you know, did they talk to McManus? Did they possibly spoke to uh, Tony Busby, the attorney representing the the accusers in this case? He's, of course, the attorney who represented the women against Deshaun Watson. He's a very public type of attorney, meaning he's, he's more than willing to use the media, social media, et cetera, to, uh, you know, accentuate any aspects of the case that he wants to. Um, you know, for me, I think after the first 24 hours, it kind of became, they're going to have to look at this as a uh, cost-benefit analysis that, you know, I, I absolutely believe in innocent until proven guilty. And Brandon McMahon has hopefully has his time to uh, refute these charges or for the accusers to show why they made these charges or allegations against them, I should say. But from the commander's perspective, you know, obviously this alleged incident occurred last year with another team. They are trying to turn the page on everything that happened the last few years that we know of uh, under Dan Snyder in terms of similar type of uh, allegations and, you know, bottom line is also, look, it's a kicker. It's something that it's a position that you can, uh, you know, find elsewhere. He was only signed to a one-year deal. I just, you know, the longer this that trial goes on, if he's still on this team, the more it can, it is going to continue to come up um, one way or the other. So I, I think I'm assuming on some level they just looked at it that way uh, and just decided it just is not for us right now, and they moved on. Ben, hard to quantify this, but just, you know, you're around these guys, you've, you've gotten to know them, et cetera, and you're plugged in. How much more do they know than we do at this point? I mean, you know, again, I, you know, let's just assume that they talked to McManus and, you know, logically he would want to, you know, share what he could with them as to why he and you know, his attorney have said that these are, you know, false allegations. But how much does he, you know, I can't imagine that Tony Busby shared too much, if anything, about, assuming he even talked to them about what his side is, right? They, you know, the thing that's interesting about this particular scenario is that it took place in a, essentially a, a public set setting on a charter plane with other people presumably around. I mean, it says in the, in the um, uh, lawsuit that one of the women caught the eye of one of the other players while McManus was supposedly behaving inappropriately and, you know, caught a look that suggested that the player recognized that, you know, this was, you know, uncalled for. So if there are witnesses, I mean, you know, this is not just your standard, or I should say standard, but this isn't just a he said, she said, there's only two people that know what happened. So if there's other witnesses, then, you know, possibly in either direction, this could, um, you know, make it pretty clear what what happened but I, you know when is this going to take place again i don't imagine that the um the accuser side is going to share any information with washington so i think there's only so much they could possibly know from the other side of this equation and like i said ultimately just decided this is going to go on for months and this is not something that we that we want to be dealing with yeah that's kind of where i'm at ben standing of the athletic on grant and danny I'm wondering, though, like, how much of this was just they took over ownership of this team in large part due to women being treated poorly in the facility, you know, as employees and allegations about Dan Snyder, right? And this is the first real test for them in this regard, and it's a pretty replaceable player when you look at the position he plays. If you miss a couple kicks, you get cut. So it's not a whole lot, non-football, obviously, but it's not a whole lot different than that. That's kind of my perception. I just, we said this earlier in the show. If he did something wrong, I want him to, to be in trouble. 
But I do not like the precedent of an allegation being enough for, for players to get cut. I think we've seen where that has backfired in other places around the league. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, you know, again, um, this is not a criminal case, so, you know, it's it's not the same level of, you know, the uh, of uh, guilt that you have to, to prove in a civil case versus a criminal case, but obviously there's some. Um, and, yeah, you want to see – if, if an allegation is coming out, you know, okay, well, what, what, what is the deal? How do, you know, can, can we tangibly say, yes, this, this did occur, this didn't occur uh, uh, enough to, to, to make a, uh, a, a, a decision. I hope he gets that opportunity. Uh, you're right. It is, it's not necessarily a great look for, for the team in that regard, but also this is where the reality of, you know, tears come into play, right? I mean, if this was somebody you know, a high draft pick, a player under a multi-year contract who's, you know, part of their core. I don't know that they're just simply releasing them. Then maybe it's more wiggle room. Maybe then they're going to say, hey, we need to see where this is. I just think in this case, for what you said, that this is the first test for them in terms of showing, hey, this is a different era where you're taking these things very responsible. And the fact that it's a replaceable position and it's a player who, who was not here, but you know, prior to a couple of months ago, not much money involved, et cetera. Then I, you know, I just think it became probably too easy. If it was a more high profile player, then I don't know what they would have done, but you know, I, you know, in this circumstance, I, I think I, you know, it, it, I understand why if they, if this is what, how they went to make this decision, I, I think I understand why they did it. Then you already kind of referenced this and, and this is what I posited earlier. I want to get your, your thought on it. I think the backlash that we're talking about, if let's say um, let's say McManus is 100% exonerated, much the way that, that Matt Areza, the, the punter from Buffalo was where the prosecution in the case literally said he wasn't present when this alleged incident occurred. Like he wasn't there. And, but that was a couple of years of his career and nobody's mad at the Buffalo bills right now. I don't think there'll be much backlash. Unfortunately, if they let, you know, let go of the innocent guy, uh, too quickly, if that turns out to be the case, I don't think Washington's going to face much backlash. We could have a different conversation about whether that's good or bad, but I don't think people will be that upset. Right, and and I don't have it in front of me in terms of when the matter rises situation began and when it came out that he what, what you said that basically he was not involved in the, in the situation. I, I don't remember if that was under a year, over a year, but it was many months, obviously, a, a, a substantial amount of time. And if he had stayed on the bill, this would have remained a topic one way or the other uh, for all that time that, you know, the coach, the quarterback, the teammates, everybody's going to have to address. It's going to be mentioned in various talk shows, panels, radios, what have you. And, you know, that's the, you know, you hate to say it, but the cost benefit analysis that somebody has to make. And, and he was like a, like a, what, a third round pick too. It wasn't like, you know, not that I'm saying not that it should matter too much if it's a third round pick versus an undrafted free agent, but obviously there is some difference there. It's an investment that they had chosen chose to make and moved on, and I'm sure largely because of of not wanting to, you know, the, the public pressure and 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 recognizing that they're going to have to talk about this until there's a resolution, and maybe the resolution goes against them, and then it gets even or goes against the player, and it gets even worse. So, yeah, I, I agree. I don't think they're going to get really any. And any backlash, they, they moved on pretty quickly. Again, this was not a player that with any ties to this team beyond the last three months. So I, I think they're fine in that regard. Um, but like you, you know, like you guys said, it's there, there is a precedent here that's you know a little it can, can make er, er, people feel a little bit uneasy. But at the same point, again, I think we understand kind of why they did what they did.